understood that uh, transportation. And then the other item uh, that another, this was from all the committee members, uh, the, the last one was um, representation. So um, looking at kind of the representation of the school committee and how that's uh, constructed. So those were the general comment and then the three items that, that uh, they thought we should kind of talk through. So other items from other boards, committees? Kathleen? It's minor because it's lease of present schools to remove the old buildings and to incorporate the lease language of the Whitman Middle School. So leases, clean up, make accurate, got it. Others? Yeah, uh, I can go. <clears throat> Please. So transportation was a big one uh, for us as well. Um, capital cost definition. Uh, repairs and maintenance, sort of how it's handled. I think that everyone knows where that's coming from. Um, we also talked about keeping the statutory method as the preferred method, is the only method in the, in the agreement. Um, we liked the change to the deregionalization language in the 2018 amendment, although that was the reason Whitman voted to table it the first time. It makes sense now seeing uh, Hansen's analysis of what it would take to deregionalize. Um, and one thing that came from a conversation with the treasurer collector, uh, former and current, is the times of payments to align with the real estate bills. I know it's an issue, I'm mm -hmm. sure Mr. Stanbrook has faced it in the past. I think Lisa's probably faced it last year. So um, just Great. make sure we have the money to pay the bills when it's due. Great, okay. Other, I know we probably may have some redundancy, but anything else from, have you guys had a chance to talk it, through? Yeah, it would only be repetitive. Okay. Um, anything that I would add, we discussed it. Um, and I can see we, you know, um, there's going to be some good discussions. Good, good. Mike, anything? Have you guys yeah, had a chance? Unfortunately, um, we had a we had one meeting scheduled between here and and that point, and then that ended up being canceled. So we haven't actually met. Um, but in terms of general feedback, um, you know, as Jim just said, a lot of repetitive with um, you know truly as a, a fincom and getting into the number of. Um, as newer members have come on board, the clarity of what is part of the operating budget, what is mandated, non-mandated, and ultimately, what is the real number that the town is looking at to provide funding for. Okay. Got it. Okay. That's a healthy working list. Um, so what I was thinking, and again, we can do this however we want, um, but kind of starting tonight, we can kind of just start to pull up each of these. So what Jeff and I um, had kind of talked about in preparation was giving everyone a packet. So it is all electronically. I like it electronically, but I know some folks are paper, so we'll do paper. Uh, but basically, in your packets, you have the original agreement, the one that's dated 731-91, that has some handwriting in the margins. You have the June 18, uh, proposed, I guess that's how I, I'm, I'm framing it as the proposed 2018 agreement. So you have a copy of that. And then you have um, also the amendment and a couple other um, miscellaneous documents. But what I was thinking might be helpful, um, kind of thinking of the spirit of that first comment we got, was to just go through some of these items and look at the language in the old agreement, the language in the proposed agreement, and maybe kind of start to have the conversation. We don't have to get there all the way there tonight of what do we think we're trying to accomplish here? What are we trying to say? What do we, what do we need to clean up? Um, and then just kind of tick through that. Uh, I think we said we want to try and keep these meetings to an hour, hour and a half. So we'll kind of keep an eye on the clock. So if we knock out one or two, great. If we get through three, then we just keep, now we kind of have the list, we work through the list. I think we can work through, if these are the big items, then the rest of it should probably go fairly quicker um, if we can work through these. So does that sound like a good plan? Mm -hmm. Does anyone want to start with one of these specifically? Otherwise, we could just jump right into capital costs and extraordinary repairs, unless anyone has a desire to start with something else. Just take, take, take them as they are. One. Yeah. Or do you, do you I'd have rather one? start with transportation. I think that's going to take a lot of discussion. Sure. We're going to start with transportation. Absolutely. That's fine. All right. So transportation. <laughs> so this is a good one to start with. So if you take the uh, original agreement and you flip to page, it's double-sided. Mm -hmm. So it says it's got a seven at the top. It's actually your like fourth page. Or, Fourth page, it's got a seven at the top. At the very bottom, 
there's a section five that says transportation. It's that wonderful paragraph. That's it. <laughs> so in terms of transportation, for those people watching, I'm going to read it real quick. School transportation shall be provided by the regional school district, and the cost thereof shall be apportioned to the member towns as an operating cost. The regional school committee shall, defer, shall determine on an annual basis whether or not non mandated busing will be paid for by the regional school district. If the regional committee decides not to provide non mandated busing, an article will be presented to the selectman's office of each town for approval by the voters. So that's kind of what we have in the current agreement. So then if you go to the amended agreement, I made notes so I could keep track of these. Uh, also, page seven, at the very bottom. So this is what kind of was uh, put together for transportation. Letter E, the district will provide pupil transportation for students who live more than one and a half miles from the school which they attend as pursuant to the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth. The amount of Chapter 71 transportation reimbursement will be subtracted from the cost of pupil transportation, and this amount will be assessed to the towns based on pupil enrollment in all member towns in the district on October 1 of the preceding fiscal year for which the apportionment will be assessed. The cost of pupil transportation for students who live less than one half miles from the school which they attend will be paid by the town in which the pupil lives. The percentage of the total pupils being transported less than one and a half miles from each member town will be multiplied by the total cost and billed to each member town. So that's kind of the existing language that we have either contractually via the existing agreement or that we've discussed. So in terms of transportation, I think the only other piece that may be helpful in this, and then we can kind of just bat this around, is there has been a lot of ongoing dialogue about transportation already within the school district. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we've kind of talked about already, and I think this is gonna be one where, again, I think it's important for this committee to be aware of, because it's gonna kind of go hand in hand, right? Depending on what we do or don't do, we gotta kind of talk through and make sure it makes sense. So Jeff, maybe you can just succinctly <laughs> kind of give an update on where we are with transportation in terms of what we're looking at, why we're looking at it, and I know we don't have a what we're gonna do yet because we're yeah. not there, but. So, so it's interesting because if you look at the old agreement, which we're under, uh, under the guise of, and you look at the new agreement, in our transportation guidelines, which are guidelines approved prior to George and I being in the positions we are, um, it talks about a one and a half mile um, reimbursement for students living in excess of one and a half miles. Then it has language that it says students living, K to, K to five students living 0.7 mile, 0.75 miles to one and a half miles are non-mandated riders. It says right, any student um, six through 12 living under one and a half miles are walkers and not transported. However, looking at the way this district has done transportation, we don't actually follow that sometimes. There are areas, yes, Chris? Just what are you referring to? The transportation guidelines that we, we build the towns under. Your, your in-house guidelines, DESE guidelines? What? It's not DESE guidelines, they're oh. in-house guidelines. Okay, thank you. So DESE gives us, car, they just say, we'll, we'll reimburse you for anybody over a mile and a half. Under a mile right. and a half, they don't care how you do That's it. Right. So if you look at the old agreement, we're supposed to, or the committee decides if it's gonna be within the operating budget or sent to the towns. In the new amended agreement from 1718, it states specifically the towns will transport students under a mile and a half. Currently in the town of Hanson, that happens. Mile and a half and under, and whoever made the decisions around sidewalks or whatever, they do. So in Hanson, every student is a non-mandated rider under a mile and a half. In Whitman, it is not. It goes 0.75 miles to one and a half, K to five, get a ride. Under 0.75, you're considered a walker. And anyone six through 12 in Whitman under a mile and a half are considered walkers with the exception of students that are on rooted roads or by train tracks or by sex offenders. 
So what we're trying to do internally is clean up that language based upon what's written here and then present it in the new transportation guidelines so it's equitable and, and easily read by, by members of both communities. And this came up last year after the Whitman Town uh, meeting when some parents were talking about voting in the non-mandated piece, they thought because they were under a mile and a half, they were considered riders. And under our guidelines, they're not. Um, so we are trying to, tr to, to change that internally to make sure it's <coughs> equitable. The other thing we changed last year, and it's already in effect, um, we, used to, we used to bill the towns for non-mandated riders by student. Now we actually use a mileage-based system, which is, which is more equitable and costs the town, uh, the, the town itself less and makes our reimbursables more. Um, so we made that, that switch last year and that will continue moving forward. But that's how we, we bill and we have to clean up the language based really upon the regional agreement to send the towns what, what is actually in place in the regional agreement. The other piece that we um, found out when we had our meetings with, with Desi last year is really the school committee is responsible for district determining transportation. It's really not up to the towns. It's up to the, the regional school district to determine how students get here. It's really not, not necessarily a, a vote um, of the communities outside of what's in here. And when we spoke with the Associate Commissioner of Finance, he's like, the, the, the school district is responsible how students get to school. Um, so we have to also address that in here, whether or not that's in the agreement or it's, a, it's something that's understood. And I think that's why number one on that chart is really important that we understand the meanings of what we're putting here um, so that it's understood at this table and then moving forward in the next 10 to 15 years um, of what we determine. So it's not something that, that um, can be interpreted differently by different member towns. And I think the thing to think about as we do this is whatever comes from this group as far as transportation, we then have to make sure those guidelines that we develop internally follow that. You know, so this is the overarching policy, so our procedures have to follow that. But second is, is it viable or is it the will of the c committee here, this group, to have different sets of transportation rules per town? If you listen to what Desi says, they say that the school department, the school department or the school committee, however, says it, sets it. So we, I think that's also something in the interpretation that we have to think about. Right, so there's, amongst the myriad of transportation complexity, right, there's kind of these two big pieces, right? So I think it's pretty clear when we talk about um, the mandated one and a half or more, it's pretty straightforward. We gotta do it, the state reimburses us. I don't think there's a lot of discussion there. The question becomes, what's best for kids for one and a half miles or less, right? And so there's certainly a cost the towns have to be aware of, and this is where we have to kind of create a partnership amongst all stakeholders, otherwise it just gets messy. But then there's like the big, what's best for kids, we gotta take into account, you know, where are they walking? What do the roads look like? <laughs> the sex offender issues that, you know, there's a whole host of things here that have to be considered. So that's where I think, you know, it kind of goes back on the, the school folks to kind of inform the discussion mm -hmm. outside of the cost piece. So that's where this is going to kind of be in tandem. And then there's the, you know, what do we want to do here? Because it could be a town decision where, you know, the school, school um, leadership, whether it's the school committee and or the administrative leadership say, hey, this is what we think is best. But again, there's a cost. It might be, hey, we're just going to transport everyone or we're not going to transport anyone or something in between. And then ultimately, is that something that we say has to be the same for both towns or we can leave up to each individual town? And I think there's still a question as to whether it can be left open to each individual town to decide. So that's, in a nutshell, what we've got to try and figure out. But we're not going to get there tonight, and I think we need more information. Mm -hmm. Well, given that the position of Desi is that the school committee is responsible. Is the school committee prepared to give us a sense of what you, as the responsible, I don't know if responsible is the right word, uh, as the school district providing the education for our kids, are you prepared to give us guidelines <coughs> that you feel should be integrated into the document. I mean, we should start there if, if as Desi says, it's 
entirely up to the school committee to determine transportation. That's where we start. Yeah, and so I think that's what's being worked through. And I, what was the timeline? I was looking at February. February, because we're trying to figure it out for this budget cycle, right? Mm -hmm. So it's soon, but I know you're working on that. It hasn't been presented to the committee yet. Nope. Um, and I know we've had conversations. You guys are all working on it. Um, so that has to be done, Frank, in terms of kind of that recommendation. But then I think, and again, I try to mirror all this together. I did talk to some people that um, were kind of part of this original mm -hmm. group that that came together, and I, I think, and again, this is, I think, I don't know, but I think that original intent did have to do with some of the costs associated with it, right? And so you have the two towns, each kind of doing their own thing. They came together, again, the state was dangling the, the carrot of, hey, regionalize, this is a great benefit, we're gonna reimburse you for all these, so easy, right? But then there was the, oh, wait a second, there could be a real significant cost here with some of this mile and a half or less, Again, we can all read this differently. My understanding reading was kind of, it was left for the towns for that reason. Hey, we're coming together. We want to come together, but we don't want to necessarily be stuck with what one town decides versus the other. I like what we're doing now because if we use a logical argument, it really should probably fit for both towns. Like, <laughs> other than there may be one town has an opportunity, you know, the cost issue, right? Whatever way that goes. But if it's a logical, hey, here's what's best for kids, mm -hmm then yeah, hopefully that will inform this committee. But there is there is piece of this that it, it's, it's definitely a challenge. Because the way we do it now, right, when we do the budget, if somebody was asking for clarity around budget, mm -hmm. Mike, right, it's, if I remember correctly, the way we've done it up to this point, we have the operating assessment, mm -hmm. we have capital, mm -hmm. and then we have transportation, mm -hmm. which is the non, non which is basically non the, or the non-mandated non correct. So we've broken it up into those three pieces, does or does that not make sense going forward? I don't know. I know there is some significant costs associated with non-mandated when we looked at it. Mm -hmm. The cost of, I think, Whitman was a lot higher than Hampton, if I remember correctly. Just Correct. factual, not Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Not taking a position. I'm just yeah, saying well, like that, just so everyone has all their cards, right? That was Correct. it. So Correct. I think when it came up last year, there was some conversation. I remember coming up in the Whitman Selectman meeting um, where they kind of it was left as, yeah, there's a bigger cost here, and that's kind of how it was. Again, all this stuff is now subject for negotiation, but hopefully with this issue, we're just trying to all get to the same place of understanding so we can deal with it, so. And, and you know, just about this, so another topic that came up around transportation was appropriating the cost of transportation, because right now it's, it's, per, it's on a mileage based, but we then associate that cost per pupil based on the mileage. Whereas another conversation that came up or a topic that came up, because we're a region, wouldn't you just split the total non-mandated cost into a per pupil, not per town per pupil, but per pupil cost, which right now is 60% to 60.9% to 39.1%, to 60 which is the operating distribution of, of our costs. So that also is something that once we, we drill down to the cost of or how we want to transport our non-mandated students, what is the, appro uh, the apportionment to the cost? Traditionally now, Hanson pays for Hanson non-mandated, Whitman pays for Whitman non-mandated based on those pupils. However, it was brought up to me a, a few times last year was shouldn't that just be part of the breakdown of the overall district and that would impact Hanson because they have less students writing that non-mandated piece. So I think that's just, you know, publicly that's another piece that we want to want to drill down at, at some point um, because it is around the cost of that. We can absolutely, as a school district, talk about what we think is in the best interest of kids. And I'll put that out. Um, but there is a cost associated to that. Um, and whether or not that cost, if we, we decide on that is, you know, going to drive us. But in our, in our budget presentation for February, I'm going to lay out what the ground rules are right now as what we have done in the past and maybe projections so both communities can see where we're at, especially around the non-mandated pieces, um, going to the, the spirit of the regional agreement. And one point that I'd like to make, which is non-controversial in terms of advocating for Whitman's position right now, this is my personal position that all monies appropriated for the schools should be part of the school budget, that last year, Whitman, how it happened, I don't know, and I'm on the FinCon. Article 5 appeared, and that was the non-mandated busing costs, whereas during all of our FinCon meetings, it was part of the Article 2. 
So now we have an article outside of Article 2 that funds Whitman's non-mandated busing costs. But the school committee still has fiscal autonomy, so anytime you get money from the towns, you should be spending it the way you say you're going to spend it, but you sh your hands shouldn't be tied by a, a specific vote of the town on one particular line item. So I'd like to see that money, however it's apportioned, back in the, the school request for however you decide to do it, operating costs, transportation, whatever, and not have any more of these separate li uh, articles that take out money and say this is what the schools will do with it. We can't, I don't believe from a statutory point of view that we can. You guys so, have the authority. Just so I want to make sure I'm tracking right. So your point was Article 2 is where the school, it's the budget the and where the school budgets. is. Yep. Okay. And assessments. there was a line for operating assessment and capital? It was operating capital and ma non-mandated throughout the entire budget season until just before town meeting. Okay, yeah, the operating right, got budget. It. So, then, so, so that non-mandated actually ended up in a different in a totally line. Totally okay. separate okay. And so your point is it necessarily um, based upon, you know, kind of figuring this out and negotiating. Your point isn't necessarily, hey, take that non-mandated line and put it in the yeah. operating budget. Put Your point is, put it in Article 2 put as a line, exactly. or if, depending on where we land, it may end up there, but that, not there yet. Okay. Yep. Okay, so, I yeah, don't know. I, I, I agree with um, Ms. Otina. The, um, it, it should be, you should take the decision process about the whether or not to transport non-mandated students away from town meetings. And it, it is a decision by the district whether or not to provide this because it will affect other transportation costs as we talked about at length last year. Um, I do know that the decision to not believe the point, but to make it a separate article was literally following the language in the 93 agreement, something that we had never done in the past. Right. Um, An article will be presented to the selectman's office for approval by the voters. So it was uh, that was where we landed on it as a, as a board of selectmen. Um, whether or not it's the right decision, we can fix it going forward. Yeah. Cool. Good. Hey, we're already making some progress. <laughs> Love it. Um, so in terms of transportation, I mean, uh, we can we can spend. Uh, so I think for me, it's this is a good time to ask questions, mm -hmm. right? Try and get the understanding. If it's because it took me at least, well, yeah, three or four times talking about this to actually understand it. When I, <laughs> I even had a separate conversation. Like, wait, what? Like, what, we do what now? How does this work? So, to me, understanding is good for tonight. In terms of decisioning, we can do whatever the, this committee wants to do. But you know, I would, for me, my perspective, I kind of like where Frank's going. Like, let's figure out what's best for kids and what that mm -hmm. looks like, and then we can figure out. Okay, is that a change? How do we pay for that? Mm -hmm. Do we not pay for that? Etc. Does that sound reasonably okay? But so, are there any additional questions on transportation? Because I know it's it's a little murky. I guess one other point to, to bring up: um, currently, the district calculates the cost of transportation two different ways per pupil and uh, mileage. Um, they assess the towns on a for the operating portion, not the non-mandated portion. For the operating portion, the costs are sent to the towns within the operating budget at a 60-40 split, and then the money is rec is recouped from the state under a different formula. <laughs> Um, using the student mile method, whatever we want to call it. Uh, I personally would like to see that aligned. I think we talked about it a little bit at the last meeting. Whether, now I think the, the town, the district will get more money back under the student mile method, so mm -hmm. that would be the preferred method to use, but I would rather the towns be assessed with the same formula that you are asking for reimbursement from the state with. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Can you? I understand. It would be a change. change. I don't understand. Can you, can you, can you, can you, I'm looking at you because I'm not following either. Uh, so last year was it February or March? We changed the method from a per pupil method yep. Yep, to a mileage method. It it, uh, it ended up uh, giving us uh, more of a state reimbursement. Right. Um, that money went into the general fund of the of the district. It didn't go towards back back towards um, the, the cost of the of the of the, uh, of the busing. Um, so, you know, we're, we're splitting the cost per, in a per pupil method on t in 24, and the money that's coming back is coming back on a mileage method and going into the general fund, not being put towards right, right towards those costs. Is it? Am I saying? Yeah, that yeah you're getting yeah. there. It's a, It's just. So you're, just you're, so I can. Yeah. Clarify this. The recommendation you're making is if we're being reimbursed by miles. Mm -hmm then we assess by miles. Correct. How many miles are driven in Hanson? How many miles are driven in Whitman? It's that basic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I believe I did that, but yeah. Yeah. I'll double check. I don't have yeah. No, that's helpful. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> yeah. that's if, that's, if that's the argument, then I, I, may have, or I may have done that. 
And I think you've done that for the non-mandated portion. I guess we'll get into it probably Thursday at the budget presentation. But you're right. But yeah, not for the mandated the portion. Mandated. And so now there's three different calculations coming. But that no, but so yeah. so that really wouldn't. And again, I think these are the things we need to talk about. But if we're going kind of, and, and I'm not a, I'm not advocating like we keep doing things the way we've done them. But if we're going with kind of the way we've done them up to this point. When we talk about that non-mandated cost, we've said the towns kind of bear their costs. Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing you say is, yeah, we were doing that on a per pupil basis, but we should do that on a mileage basis for consistency's sake, because we didn't do that when we did the non-mandated. We should do the m mandated the man portion, yes, as on a mileage basis. As oh, and so that's what we didn't do. That so yes. was the mile. That's okay. the difference. Okay, I just want to see one formula, so it's easy to explain this process in the future. Okay. Yeah, no, good point. I don't see why that wouldn't make yeah, sense. No, I, it might have just been, again, in the process of changing yeah. over. This got changed, this didn't. Okay. okay. Whatever makes you clearer. Glad you're following. It's going to make it a lot yeah. easier for everybody. Yes. I got it. I understand. You got it? I think, and I think John was hamstrung by the language in the agreement. He, he couldn't do that. This got year. it. And that's on the manda uh, mandated it's both thing. Both. It, we already no, said, right. I thought we didn't. I was hearing him, and I thought we needed to make the update on the non mandated, but it no, sounds like we, we made the updated on the non mandated. We just need to make it on the mandated, which again is kind of a, a technicality since that's all state reimbursed yeah. money. Mm -hmm. And that's on the 60 40 split. That's it would be getting away from the 60 40 split. Going to mileage based. Mileage based. The right. same way we ask for money back from the state. Okay, so it would basically, if I'm hearing it correctly, stay the, the way it has been where it's been more of an 80-20 split. For the non-mandated piece, yes. yes, we could discuss that, again, if the district decides on how to, if the decision's made at the school, dis, uh, the school committee level, maybe it would make sense to bring that into the budget, but I'm talking about something different right now. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just want to make sure because, I mean, even that time, and I've only been to a few school committee meetings, but there was a vote taken, and they wanted it all grouped together. And that wouldn't. I think right. I think I think everyone's struggle has been. <laughs> we have a paragraph. Exactly. Right. We've been doing it for thirty years. Thirty years. Yep. And then we changed some other stuff, and now we're trying. Right. So I don't. Right. I think that was the hard part, and I think that's what resulted in these weird kind of. Well, we got to vote it this way to make sure we're doing this. I think the charge of this group is going to be to clean, like, let's just clean. So, like, the spirit of this conversation, yeah. let's clean this up to a point where it just, we kind of know what it says. Let's make sure we're all on the same page. Take it back to everyone so that there's clear language that spells this all out going forward. So there is no, whether it's the school committee shall decide, the school committee should vote, the, whatever. Like, we need to spell all that out. Uh, for now, I think we're kind of stuck in the, this is kind of how we've done it, interpreted it. Um, but I, does that help? I think that's why we ended up with all this weird stuff. Right, left. and that's why I think it's going to be more than a paragraph. It's probably going to be a page and a half that has <laughs> mandatory, non-mandatory. Right. Right. Yes, and how it's calculated. Yeah. 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 John's really good with, like, the step-by-step -step formula, so we could literally just put, like, step, step one, step, one, step, two, step three. Right? Like, it, it should be clear for everyone to understand. Or you don't have to write the formula you're using into the agreement. You just have to say the district will decide on a formula. <clears throat> to assess transportation and request reimbursement from the state. And this is right. So that if something changes in the future and other regional school districts catch on to the per mileage method yep. and that decreases, there may be a new formula in the future. <laughs> when state aid instead when they catch on and they move from a ninety six percent to an eighty percent exactly. so it balances out. I see what you say. Gotcha. Yeah. So just just so I have clarification. Um, it sounds better to move towards a mileage because if they're doing it per pupil do we actually know how many pupils are utilizing the bus? So, right. Because, I mean, I, I can speak probably for many who travel Franklin Street. The traffic to get in and out of here during school, yeah. before school and after school, is horrendous. And it travels all the way down to Franklin Street, which to me says more, there's plenty of people who are either driving their own cars for students or being students are being picked up. So do we actually know how many pupils are actually utilizing the busing systems of the two towns? Do we, have we ever taken account or so there, I think to figure that I out? I think there's two pieces. So one is, um, not to rehash kind of the, <laughs> the fun we had last year, but there was a clear advantage to everyone 
Whitman, Hanson, the school district, <laughs> everyone, in using that mileage-based formula because we were able to take a bigger chunk of that reimbursement. So that was, I don't think anyone argued that. Everyone's happy with that. We're gonna keep doing that. What these guys are talking about is at some point, you know, if everyone were to do that, you know, does the state now reduce the reimbursement, right? Because they have fixed money from the pot and we're, they, we did this all up and up, they blessed it, all that. I think the second piece is about transportation utilization, yeah. which I think is part of what is being looked at. The hard part with that becomes, as, yeah. as a, these folks have eligible, articulated, the state has certain rider. requirements. Right, it's an eligible rider, ridership that you have to have 75% or more on your buses of. So at any given, so that's how we take that count. But at any given time, somebody might not take the bus that day, that week, whatever. However, they're still eligible to ride that bus based on where their physical address is. So if you go with, you can only ride when, if you say by this date, you are going to then decrease possibly the amount of riders, but you're gonna decrease the amount of money that you can then claim for reimbursement from the state. So it's one of those, these are the eligible riders. This is what we have to report at. This is the that list. However, if, the, if you don't take it, you're still eligible should you want to. So nobody really wants to give that up. Parents don't want to give that up because at some point they might need it again. So That's it's real hard to take that snapshot in time. And we can't make them give it up, right? right. No, you can't. So right. even if we right. had a legal document that right. said, right. Chris Howard signs that his right. two daughters are never going to ride the bus right. and they build all these plans, I can wake up the next day and be like, hey, per state law, my you, kids get a if you're seat. One, so. If you're 1.56 miles away. Yeah, and I'm from one, you know, <laughs> And that's, that's the issue here at the high school. It's from the door to the door, not the beginning of Franklin Street. <laughs> so I think last time we looked, there were two kids, we got a long two kids <laughs> that were less than a mile and a half from the high school. Right. You know, there's not really not. So if you look at the 20 some buses, Until you, a drive lot, down there. <laughs> you know, a lot of times kids aren't on the bus, but by law, because we're getting that reimbursement, those buses are thinking. How far back can we put the middle school? We're just going to say, you know, the way we're going to solve this problem, we're just going to build really long road changes. Every road's now a mile. Yes, we'll love it. Your fields are in front now, right? Yeah. <laughs> middle school's in front. So yeah, we're, we're working on that, but that's, and again, publicly, that's we've said this before, but even bringing it here, because of that 1.5 and we're a regional district that is reimbursed, we have to put every student who is 1.5 and above with a seat on the bus, whether they, they find it or not. Which is the weird part. And I don't think that should be an argument if someone chooses to drive. Mm -hmm. Correct. It's Correct. It's their own personal decision. Right. It's like, why do I pay taxes if I don't use this? Because you're Correct. paying taxes. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, and that's a good point. Right. Yep. Any other questions on transportation? This has been good. I think this is kind of getting us all to a point of understanding. Anything else? Final point is just make sure whatever the final decision is that the student transportation guidelines, which is totally separate from yeah. the agreement, 100%. reflects what, yes. because yes. there yes. are parents 100%. in Whitman, I'm 100%. sure they're in Hanson as well, who are confused. Yes. It's like, I thought because I voted for the non-mandated busing that my kid would get a bus. We agree. Uh, I took those calls. <laughs> yeah. I, I sent you those calls. The store. <laughs> right. No, I, I, we understand. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah. yeah. Good. So transportation, I think we got some understanding. Ultimately, we got to look for kind of the, the district, kind of figure out what we want to do. And again, I think that's one where, depending on when we do that, we can certainly orchestrate that in a manner so that, hey, if it's going to be the February blank school committee meeting, we'll let you all know, hey, we're going to we're gonna talk about transportation at seven o'clock that night, so if you wanna all come here at live, we'll make sure that this group gets a, <laughs> gets a front row seat <laughs> to understand, so good. Um, where do we wanna go next? Any particular area? It's like Jeopardy, which, uh, <laughs> any, anyone want a uh, capital cost? $300. <laughs> $5,000. Do you wanna to go to representation just because- Yeah, let's talk about representation. Okay. There's actually yeah, a lot of so guidelines. Right? Representation for 400. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so representation. So again, if we look at our, what we have to work with today, um, if we pull up that original agreement, on page two at the bottom of the page, and again, if any of you found anything different in the agreement, let me know. But when I read them, this is all I could find. So at the bottom, it says governing principle. And it says, in accordance with one man, one vote, in parentheses, committee members will be elected by voters in member communities with each community's representation apportioned according to population. 
representation will be adjusted every five years beginning in 1995. There's a whole bunch of stuff above that, but that, at least when I read it, all pertained to the interim committee. So remember, right, when you came together, you had the Whitman schools, the Hanson schools, you had a Whitman school committee, you had a Hanson school committee, so they kind of had to go from a Hanson school committee, a Whitman school committee, to a Whitman Hanson. So that, to me, all the above stuff was all, had to do with that. The only thing that kind of we're left with for the post merger, if you will, is that, which is basically population. So that was the old language. If you go to the proposed agreement and you go to page two, top of the page, hopefully my notes are right here. Uh, page two, top of, the, oh yeah, here we go. Um, letter C, small letter C there towards the top of the page. It says each member of the committee shall have one vote and each vote shall be of equal weight unless and until a shift in the respective populations of the member towns based on the most current United States decennial census estimates or five years in between based on the state census. If a population shift causes an impermissible disparity based on the one person, one vote principle, the committee will act to address the disparity by either adjusting the number of committee members or weighing the votes. So if someone can explain precisely what that means, I'll, that would be helpful. But so that's kind of what we have there. And then um, in your packets, I think this is the relevant. This is a very relevant document. So at the top it says uh, administration of the government, Part One, Title Twelve, Chapter Seventy One, Section Fourteen. It's one page in your packet. You all have that. Mm -hmm. So this is. Um, the state law that pertains to how regional uh, district committees can form their membership. And I'm not going to read it in its entirety because I don't love doing stuff, but basically there's five ways. Um, one is electing committee members by voters in member communities with each community's representation apportioned according to population. So I think that's what we do now. Mm -hmm. Two is electing members in district-wide elections to be held at the biennial state elections. The th third option is electing members with residency requirements in district-wide elections to be held at the biennial state elections. Four is weighing the votes of committee members according to the population they represent. And five is appointing committee members by locally elected officials such as school board members. Each regional school district shall designate an uh, individual service clerk. So that's kind of what the state has given us as the parameters. Um, so when I was thinking about this topic, I don't know if, uh, you know, I don't know, <laughs> I know what we've done. Um, I don't know what folks' thoughts are. I mean, to me, the language is clear. I, I know if <coughs> communities agreed in doing something different, I, I suppose we could try and petition the legislature to change the law. Um, but the law does kind of create some parameters around this one. So that's kind of what we have for representation. We can take that conversation wherever people want to go, so. I'll go first on this one. Sure, oh, sure. Chris, did you have your hand up? No, no, go ahead. I just had a question. Okay, uh, um, Okay. well, I'll ask you a question. I... Okay, um, can you help me understand the difference between, um, the, what, what are the residency required? What are they referring to there? Yeah, I think that's one that I, I, I'm right there with you, Chris. So electing members with residency requirements in district-wide elections. Um, I think that would I know. probably mean that district. one would have to live within the boundaries of the district, not the particular town. It would be like an at-large election in a city where certain people are elected from each precinct and then there's a group that's elected at large. Oh, so this doesn't really pertain to oh. us then. So, I so not could, unless I we accepted this. Well, I, okay, so Frank, I'm trying how to, did you read the difference between number two and three? Because that's, I, I that's read, what I'm getting. I read two that way, so. The difference. Yeah. I didn't know the difference. I thought I saw it a minute I was ago. struggling between I read two this, and three. And every time I read it, I read it differently. <laughs> two and three, <laughs> three to me were what he just said. So I, I, well, I read two that way, and I read three as you run as the Whitman School Committee member in both towns, and someone else would run as the Hanson School Committee member on ballots in both towns. But doesn't it further uh, down say? That? Okay. So you would have, so scenario two would just be Justin Evans is running for school committee, he'd be on the ballots for in both Whitman and Hanson. And three would be Justin Evans from Whitman is running from school committee, and Chris right. Scriven right. is now from Hanson. Sort of what it sounds like. Okay. That was my. Okay. So, so can I ask a further clarifying question? So that means that possibly you could have 
eight members of yeah. like you're just elected to the school committee. Correct. So mm -hmm. you so there's no whipping your hands. You, you could have, have no ten, you could have from ten from, You could directly have ten from one yep. in scenario so, two. Um, in scenario two, right? In two. Okay, help me understand scenario three then. So then scenario three would it would either be you run for a specific seat, either the Whitman or the Hanson seat. But you could be from either town? Or it's at large and it says no more than six may be from Whitman, no more than four may be from Hanson. But it would be district wide. But so people from Hanson would be voting for the people in Whitman. Correct. Yeah. And the people scenarios. in Whitman would be voting for the people in Hanson. And you're saying that two would cap it at whatever we determine and three. Oh, wait, that would get confusing. Wouldn't? Mm. So both and we can ask for legal. Funds. Yeah, we oh, may. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not a lawyer again. No, but I think I, I kind of see where you're me. going. <laughs> That's a, just how I had read this. Yeah, so two would be, you know, ten members running in or ten seats in both towns. Yep. Right. However, it doesn't matter where you by the vote. Right. Um, and the same candidates would be on both ballots. Right. Both ballots. And three, the same candidates would be on both ballots. But there would be a limit to no more than six, maybe from Whitman, no more than four, maybe from Hanson, right. either by voting for a vote for particular two, vote seat, for three, depending or, on yeah. what your vote exactly. Is. Yeah. So those are the kind of the options that the state has given us. Yeah. Thus far. And that's why I think, um, you know, and, and thanks for having us in here, Christian. We've talked about it. Um, I think uh, a two-thirds vote on any kind of vote that the school committee would make would be the easiest way to do this. Um, so that on, on anything that the school committee would actually vote for, you need seven out of 10. Um, whether that's, and th here's my thinking on this. If the school committee is doing their job, there's never a tie vote. It's never 5-5. Five, five. So to give Hanson a fifth member and take one away from Whitman to make it 5-5, five, five, it's <laughs> not going to matter. Because if a vote ended 5-5, five, five, the school committee members are not doing their job for the district and for the students. They have some hidden agenda in the back of their head that they want to take care of their town, their front. So if it's still a six to four, and you need seven votes to pass something, mm -hmm. they're doing it for the benefit of the students and the benefit of the district. Mm -hmm. And the towns have nothing to do with it. I mean, Justin and I can sit here all day. He represents Whitman, I represent Hanson, but Chris and Chris represent the district. So if it was a majority, if it was a two-thirds vote on any kind of vote, you're doing what's best for the district. Well, I, th that sounds, I mean, I, in, on principle, I guess I can understand that, but in practice, so, uh, I don't know that that would. Well, uh, so John, on here's, any vote. Here, here's one, so here's one super relevant fact, because I'm not sure, I think you guys may know this or you may not, but the budget vote requires a two-thirds vote, right? So anytime we vote the budget, and so, and, and the voting requirements, whether it's majority or two thirds or the super majority, there's like a nine tenths one for what is it? Unpaid bills. Unpaid, Unpaid bills. bills after the fiscal yeah. year. But that's all codified again, like in, and that's mass general law. Like we don't have a lot of, I don't know, we can ask, we'll leave anything on the table, so we can certainly ask. I'm not sure we'd have a lot of leeway to say, you know, hey, Whitman Hansen wants to kind of change it this way with like a two thirds, right? Like that might be tough. But just for a point of reference, the budget is a two-thirds, right? Like, no, so ma no matter what, even when we had the issues going back a few years ago that I want to block out, um, <laughs> right? The, a lot of that came down to the fact that we couldn't get a two-thirds vote mm -hmm. to kind of move past the issue. So the big one, I don't know if this helps you or not, but the big one, which is the budget vote, is codified. It has to be two-thirds, always will be. And it has, has it be. ever been less than eight to two when you attended eight to two? The budget? One? The, the, the first, oh, yeah. the first oh, yes. year when we, when we <laughs> yeah, was yeah. seven to three. It, it, it was six four it for six a bit. Four, four, six, for four, about six, four, uh, four, four months. Four. Yeah. No. I didn't have any gray hairs before that. It was COVID. Neither it was That's right. I think that's what I was created. I'm sorry? That's kind of what I was thinking in practice. People vote with their towns more often than not. And I'm not saying that's appropriate. I'm but, just oh. saying reality-wise. So. so, Chris, but I don't know. To me, that's wrong. And I, I, and I get it. You know, we can go back to the, you know, the, the statutory method now and Hanson paying more, and I get it. We should, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because that's the way Desi does it. Mm -hmm. But I think the school committee, as members, has to 
hold themselves to a higher standard than living in the town of Whitman or living in the town of Hampton. I think that goes back to um, voting and who, who, what uh, candidate is elected from the community. I think but Chris, but hang on, hang on. So, and you can, you guys can jump in. The only time, so I've been on the committee seven years, the only time I can recall us yeah. ever having Hanson Whitman votes was when we had that yes. statutory budget. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that ever. was the, the spring of 2020. So we certainly have <laughs> Uh, six I four. <laughs> yeah, we certainly have six four votes, but Chris, I don't. Very rarely. Th but th th we have six four votes, mm -hmm. or seven three votes, or e two votes. But those are based on those aren't Whitman Hanson. That's so, correct. Right. <laughs> right. Correct. Yeah. That I, I might be more. That, honestly, that might be more. The only party lines were on that vote. Yes. And that's that's by, by, by town. By, by town. town. That's, that's what I mean. It. That's the only time I can remember. So, so Jim, to your point, like we don't get. Like Chris right. and I right. are going to disagree on something, but it's not, or we may agree. Like it, what I don't see, we can pull, but, we can pull votes, but I don't, I don't remember seeing. But votes. see, that's why I think we can eliminate this page. Um, and okay, so I, you know, not to get sidetracked, uh, I was the chair of the deregionalization feasibility committee for the town of Hanson, and that's because that's what the people in Hanson wanted. So I did it, but going through that process, I, you know, and I know I was very vocal, um, you know, against Whitman. I know I was, but I was wrong, because when they sh when I saw what it was, I, I, I understood it much more clearer. And if I was a member, I'll probably never get elected to the school committee, but if I was a member of the school committee, my job is not for the town of Hanson, my job is for the district. And this is what Desi has said we could do. We have to do it for the benefit of the students. Mm -hmm. And I think we can eliminate a ton of stuff just by making everything a two-thirds vote. I mean, it's just something to think about because can, can I just <laughs> it's an interesting thought. To make sure I get where you're going. Um, if we were to adopt a rule in our agreement that says all school committee votes must be two thirds, that would end the discussion about whether it's six four or five five. It would just put it to rest. Because it in wouldn't be opinion. for the benefit of one town or the other, it would be a benefit for the district. I, and I, you know, I hear it, I get it. I, in my experience since 1993, when we first went into the region, I've never seen a party line vote, except That's 2020. when we got into the uh, assessment. I've seen stupid votes, <laughs> <laughs> but I've never seen a party line vote. But I really do think we can eliminate, you know, quite a lot of stuff with that. And, you know, whatever, let's say a few years down the road, if we're going with the statutory method and a few years down the road, it switches where Whitman, um, you know, has higher property values and uh, better medium income, um, but it's still there. And the school district will still vote what is best for the district, no matter which town. Yeah, I, I can. I think in principle, I can see where you're going. But in, in, uh, to your point, Chris, I understand that we don't always vote six four, right? No, sometimes it's ten zero. Correct. It's nine one. Right. Sometimes it's eight two. When we got to the statutory method, that was, was fresh in my mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think to Jim's point, one of the biggest reasons why we don't do six four all the time is because people, most people on the committee, Correct. take it upon themselves to represent the students and not their town. Mm -hmm. But there are people on our board, I don't mind saying, that most often vote party line or town by town. And that's a reality. And that's, I think, what I'm saying in practice, that's what I'd be concerned So we, we got a couple different issues, right? So one is <clears throat> the composition of the committee. Mm -hmm. So Jim's kind of added a representation part B, right? mm -hmm. which is fine. This is why we're all here, right? So representation, we still have to figure out the composition of the committee, right, as a whole. And then Jim's kind of added this added element of are there safeguards or however you want to you know, put it to, that we could put in place requiring some different voting requirements within the committee. So I don't know. It's definitely something well, we could I mean, and it, you know, it's 60-40 <clears throat> split. We know that. I, I have no problem with Whitman having six, Hanson having four. Um, 
you know, because that's the way it's been set up. It's very easy doing it like that. Mm. But the school committee as itself, uh, I, I feel votes in Chris, I have potty lines too, even right in Hanson. But mm -hmm. it's the district, it's not the town. I agree with you. And this is, and this is why, you know, between the four of us, and you know, thank God everybody else is here too, but we're gonna vote this. And I told one of my family members, uh, you know, over Christmas that I said there are four intelligent people, all right, well, three and me, <laughs> that are gonna sit down and decide what we're gonna do. And I, I don't think the four of us have potty lines. I think we wanna do what's best for the students and what is best for the district. And to me, you make it one simple thing, two thirds majority, and that's on every vote, even the simplest ones. And then it's, it's clear cut that this is in our agreement. All votes, two thirds majority. Does that get into two thirds of the committee or two thirds present or like what it's are we? Two thirds, so I think our interpret, well, I guess we'd have to clarify. That's what we I'm probably getting. have that opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for budget, it was two thirds, so but it required seven votes. Correct. Yeah, Always two thirds seven. of the Member, correct. Member. Mm -hmm. yeah. Presence or I'm just saying president. that's something to yeah. consider. It was two thirds of the members. members. So for this, you probably want two thirds of those present, just for. So for budget, right. I don't think we have the choice, right? Right. right. Choice. But for this one, yeah, because right now that we're You'd talking it through, you got eight people at a meeting. Right. Two yeah. people aren't there. You're gonna be. You're never and, gonna have yet. Well, it's easy. Right. Just get seven yeses. Yeah. yeah. Right. Chris, right. you know, a couple of weeks in advance, if you you're going to have an important vote, and you, you want to make sure you're at that. So so I'm trying to think of is. Can you guys think of where that would have been an issue, like trying to get a two-thirds vote? I mean, so we got policies, um, we have reports that we accept. Electing the chip, like in uh, the first oh, that would be a fun one. <laughs> no, like the first meeting. <laughs> like the first meeting, that's usually the one that the reorg throughout the years has sometimes been. <clears throat> Not a two-thirds. Well, I understand two they had the challenge in Washington. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah we did way better than that. Come yeah. on. But I guess, so, so one good. question, just to fulfill, if that were to happen, just to fulfill the tenets of what the requirement is, is then you would go with number one, which we have, yep. is population. Mm -hmm. so, so it would look a lot like it does by like every five years. I don't know if we do it every five years, you know, census or whatever. But then the caveats would be two-thirds vote. Uh, I'm just trying to think mm -hmm. of how this yep. would count. Yeah. Well, can we spend the only minute? question is whether we can do that legally. No. This is just district committee membership options, mm. not voting on issues options. This is to how do you elect right. the members mm. of the committee. Right. But I think if it was codified within the regional agreement, that would yeah. be something that, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I guess I'm just trying to figure out, so A, I don't see a lot of, imp I don't see a lot of adverse impact other than maybe chair. Sure. Yeah, um, that. but I think, yeah. you know. Well, so far, I mean, that, that's why I'm glad the discussion's happening so we can kind of well, think it right. through. Right, and Desi yeah. would go, is going to have to agree to whatever we agree to. Right, so, 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 so you know, just, just throwing this out there, we could have had some issues around COVID, around, yeah. Yeah. around yeah. masks, yeah. and, you know, those things. That got a little dicey depending on who was in our com community. The committee really went with Desi guidelines, but there were other school committees that were pretty polarized by different factions that were out there. So, you know, again, what's in the best interest for kids? Because you're really be moving the majority from six to seven. Mm -hmm. It's one person. Because right now, to get a majority, you need a six, six four. four. Yeah. Yep. It just increases the difficulty of the school committee passing anything. Mm -hmm. Probably wouldn't affect much, but. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, maybe that's one we can yeah, kind of... I, I think in this case, it's what, what do people have the biggest fights about? And it generally comes down to money. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's already and, <laughs> yeah, and it's, yeah. So I think that where any of these discussions come is when people start rifling through who's going to have to pay for what. Um, so I would think that on a go-forward basis, the where it would be most advantageous is that because I think then you get the the uninformed viewpoint that um, you know they are making me pay this and and I specifically want to say the uninformed viewpoint of it because it's a knee-jerk reaction and it's the so I give you a quick example because I don't know the specific formula and I'm just thinking that there's more students in Whitman but if you have more kids getting on the same stop and the mileage is roughly the same because you have, you have 10 kids getting on in one stop to four in Hanson. Yeah. Um, you know, then does somebody else look at that formula and say, well, wait a minute, that now has this much coming back on this side of the equation versus this much. 
these things generally always revolve around money, and I think that's really the only point where I can see this being advantageous. Okay. So we can certainly kind of let that sink in and think about it. In terms of the actual composition of the committee, so the part, do you want me to introduce part B? I'm going to bring it back to part A. Um, do people have thoughts in terms of, so right now we do number one, electing members based upon the, the population, right? And there we can probably figure out some language of when we revisit population, but does that make sense or is there any appetite to look at some of these other options? Makes sense. Makes sense. See, to me, the only thing, oh, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, it makes sense to me and I think it, to all these other options, seem to be really complicating things. Mm -hmm. And so that's just a first glance, but I'm obviously open to anybody else's perspective. So the thing that, and I'll throw it out there, and then if there isn't an appetite, we'll move on. But the thing that you know, I think about when Jim made that point of we're elected as school committee members to do what's best for the district, I guess when I think of my role, I've never thought of it as, as a Hansen versus Whitman role. Like I just haven't. I, I've never. That's it's not really. That's not my thinking, right? Like how how can? Because to me, that's a short-sighted. That's going to run its course real quick. And when I think of some of the people that I need to work with in Whitman, like that's not going to work very well. So I kind of like the notion of if you have a committee member and they're consistently just in it for, you know, I'm just here to do it this way and I, that town be damned. I kind of like the idea of introducing some sort of voting where, you know, you, you got to kind of represent both towns. Whether, so I don't know, like, I, you know, I don't know whether that's two or three and, and maybe, maybe we just, maybe it's not for us, but I kind of like the fact that, yes, Chris is elected, I'm elected from Hanson, but I need to support the district and if someone for Whitman has a point, I can't just be like, Pfft. You're for Whitman, pounce in. You don't vote for me. No, I might actually have to have that dialogue and listen, understand, because maybe they are going to vote for me. So I kind of, I almost, I'm intrigued by this option of, you know, whether it's, you got to, you know, we're still going to do it by population and there's six people from Hanson and there's four from Whitman, but maybe this concept of people from both towns are kind of having some input on who's serving on the committee, or we just have a district-wide. I, I can see the district-wide becoming an issue because, you know, maybe this town has more people to vote. So, mm -hmm. And now you're, I can see that being an issue, but I do kind of like this idea of, I guess the way we're interpreting number three, electing members with residency requirements in district-wide elections to be held, you know, so... We have six seats from Whitman, so there's going to be two a year right now, and there's one from Hanson, you know, and every third year there's going to be two. I, I don't know. I kind of, I, 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 I'm intrigued by the option. I think the only challenge there is that it becomes the state election. So rather than running a May election where you need 600 votes to win, you're running on either the presidential or gubernatorial ballot where you'll need 6,000 between the two towns. So it really increases the difficulty of running for a school committee seat, uh, I didn't which I guess is up to you guys, but... That becomes a much more difficult, I mean, fundraising wise, it uh, becomes a challenge. Yeah, yeah thanks for, I wasn't really thinking about the biennial. Because yeah. state elections are in November. Mm -hmm. So your school committee would You'd be right reorganizing. In the of budget season. Be reorganizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't like Just that. when the budget's being okay. presented. Yeah, no, thank you for your. I wasn't really thinking about that biennial piece, but yeah, that the state elections, that would be a little messy. Because then you'd have. I mean, right now we have some annual change, which is also helpful because if someone decides to leave, you just slot it into the next May election. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is there any appetite to think of something other than one? At least in terms of bringing that back to your, so I think tonight's meeting, right, bring some of this back to your respective boards and get some feedback. Um, transportation, hopefully you can share a little bit of an update of what we talked about, what we're looking to do. Um, and then do we want to, I guess we can throw out know, the, the idea Jim had of maybe I think two thirds Jim, Jim's idea of saying, look, here's how we make it out political, it works for me. I don't have a problem with the two thirds. So yeah, so maybe we bring that back. I think it's important to define whether it's two thirds of the committee or two thirds present in voting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Which has pros and cons on both sides, right? right. Mm -hmm because all of a sudden people conveniently decide not to show up for a meeting and now you have two thirds with right. four, four out of six, mm -hmm. right? Um, so yeah, we'd have to- You wouldn't have a quorum with four. No, if you had six, six members, members, so if we did it of members present, and you had six members would be a quorum 
then four technically you'd only need four votes. I don't think the chair would uh, hold those votes if. Well, unless it was a, you don't, this, this is kind of what I'm getting at. I'm just trying to throw it all out there. Is that, um, you know, it's one thing to make decision based upon the people we have in, in these seats now. Yeah, and and, and you say, you know, right. okay, I know how we operate. Well, 10 years from now might be completely different. So I just want to make sure we're considering that as we go forward, you know? Yep. I, well, on that point, Chris, I would hope that this, uh, a regional, the, the regional agreement is reviewed uh, at least twice within the 10 years. You know, so that the possibility of those people, if they do get on, yeah. I would hope the towns wouldn't reelect them if they're not showing up. Right. But, you know, I mean, that's why I think, you know, we went way too long from 93 to oh, 17 sure. or 18, and we're finally getting back here. Um, I'd like to concentrate now, and then, like, with your worry 10 years from now, let's put in a. Uh, you know, a thing that we have to uh, review the contract, um, where yeah. it becomes much easier for, you know, four people or whatever that number is going to be four years from now to take two meetings, three meetings to review the contract and say, no, it's good. Everything is fine. Nothing's changed in four years. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're ready to do a, another review three or four years later. Oh, boy, did we screw this up last time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. And I sat here every month for a year, and you know it was a waste. That's why I like the way this committee is set up. We're going to meet every Monday night until we're done. Mm -hmm. So, except for next month. <laughs> <laughs> but after that, yeah. it is Monday, right? Yeah, but next Monday is a holiday. holiday. But every every Monday after that, yes. Okay. I, I like where you're going. Yes, uh, absolutely, yeah. 100. percent I just didn't want anyone to show up. Next and month. that's why getting back just to the two thirds, it's going to hold those committee members responsible for showing up and doing the right thing for the district and not have some kind of hidden agenda for their own town. Yeah, yeah. You know? I think it's good. So I think we can, um, uh, if, you know, I don't know if we'll have time. I know we have regional agreement committee update um, mm -hmm. on our next agenda for Wednesday. So we'll either bring it up to the school meeting this Wednesday. We'll try and bring it up this Wednesday, at least get them thinking about it, just to get thoughts. Okay. Um, so we talked about transportation. We talked about, um, representation, this is probably a good place to start because uh, we're right in that window of an hour 15. Um, and then we can just pick back up with uh, costs, extraordinary repairs, um, and um, what am I missing? Leases. Oh, le and leases Lease and time of payment. So we'll pick up with those three when we come back. Okay. Not next Monday because of the holiday, mm -hmm. but after that. And then the plan is to just keep rolling Mondays after that. Mm -hmm. So. Kind of knock it off. Monday at five. Monday at five. Mondays. Yes. Mondays at five, except for Martin Luther King uh, next Monday. So does that sound good? Yeah. Quick update. I know you were you were so, charged with some stuff from this committee to get some information from Mars. So I, I sent out an email to Mars, the director or the executive director and the assistant director, just about um, potentially partnering with us as consultants. However, naming the fact that the committee felt that they didn't want the same two consultants as we had last night. Um, because there was just some, in, there, there's, there wasn't a good feel. So they have not responded back yet. I don't know who else they have as, as consultants, um, but preferably um, going in a different direction with a different set of eyes would help us out. So I'm just waiting to hear from them. So I assume by the next meeting, two weeks from today, I should have information for you. And the level of, of consultation is gonna be depending on what this committee wants. Um, because a lot of that, their consultation went into that 18 document. Um, and then if you want, I can, if we have legal questions, I right. can send them out to our council and try to get some answers back for the next meeting as well. It sounded like the only one was the interpretation of the different composition options, yeah. but it sounds like we don't need to touch that anyway. So mm -hmm. I think we're in good shape. Um, other than that, the only other thing <coughs> I mentioned to Jeff, I didn't catch this when we put this together, public comment. So we yeah. will absolutely make sure it says public comment on the next one. Because uh, I know we talked about having um, town representatives, uh, members at large, that type of thing. So if folks want to come, they can come. Obviously, we want these to be working meetings, so we're not saying we're just going to stop every two seconds. But if folks have, if any people in the public, people you talk to, have questions, concerns, thoughts, have them come here because it's better for them to come here than to show up at town meeting <laughs> with their questions. Um, 
Other than that, I think we covered everything. So unless there's anything else, except the motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you.